Hey, I want to talk to you about something you need to be aware of and something you need to do if you're a beginner gardener or maybe you've been gardening a while or maybe you're just dreaming about starting a garden. Something that's very important. Soil sampling. You know why? Because you want to be successful gardening and I want you to be successful too. Yeah, I know. Soil sampling is not something you stay awake at night thinking about. It's nothing that's extremely sexy either, but it is something that's fundamental that you need to do to make sure you're successful. You know, if you've been gardening for a while and your plants look stunted and you just don't think they respond to your fertilizer like they should, you could have a pH problem. Or if you're new to gardening, you definitely want to know what your pH is in that new plot there so you can adjust it so you can be successful. If your pH is off, then your plants are simply not going to have that fertilizer available for them and actually some of the uh, other nutrients in there could actually be toxic to them if your pH is at a uh, certain level so that is really important also with the soil sample you can find out some other things like where maybe your phosphorus levels are at and your potassium levels are at and that'll help you plan out what crops you want to plant where now there's several ways you can do a soil sample I mean these some of these kits you can buy at the big box stores to test your pH and I guess those probably work okay but what I recommend is using your county extension agent and using your local agricultural college you know here in Georgia we got the UGA and um, we can go to our county agent and we can get one of these nice little soil sample bags right here fill it out and we can fill it up and we can carry it back down there and they'll send it off for us and we can get that soil sample back take somewhere around six to ten dollars somewhere there it's not bad at all well worth the money so the thing about it is you're going to have to go to the county extension office or either call them let them mail you a bag or whatever i think this is probably the best way to go you get more comprehensive soil tests this way and plus it's not much money now normally you do have to wait a week or so back in the day we had to put our address on there and they snail mailed us the results but nowadays you know you put your email on there and they email you the results a lot quicker so let's dig in how you fill out the soil sample bag and what's included in doing the soil sample well here's the soil sample bag right here uh you can see there it says soil sample uga you know regardless of what state you live more likely you got a uh, university there that performs these soil samples for you so contact your local county extension agent or whatever look them up online you can figure all that out so the routine test let's see if we can get down here you see there the routine test of what this test for is going to be ph which is important p which is npk that is phosphorus k is the last in our npk that is potassium calcium mg which is magnesium zinc manganese and lr Yep. You know what that LR means? That means lime requirements. So if your pH is low, it's going to give you how much lime to apply to adjust your pH upwards. All right, let's roll down here. See there, fill to the line. I put my, my name there, my phone number. And there we go. You can put your email there, which is really neat these days. Put your email and they'll just email it back to you, the results. Your PO box, I guess this is a backup here with your city address. And then you always put down there the crop. Now, for a vegetable garden, you just want to put vegetable garden because I wouldn't necessarily put each individual crop, just round it up, put vegetable garden because most vegetables have the same pH requirements and phosphorus and potassium and all these other levels are going to be the same regardless. And then you got to put sample ID there. Now, I put 1G. Tell you a little tip here. If you've got uh, a bad air in the garden, you could do two samples. And this is the reason I always use the G. You could put number one sample, good sample. And if I got an air in my garden that's not performing like everything else is, that may be a bad air, I will pull another soil sample for that air there, and I will call that one B. And I will compare the two to see if I can find something that is causing my problem. You know, whether it be an overload of one of the minor nutrients or anything like that, I can compare the two and know. Now, generally speaking, for most vegetable gardens, one sample is all you're going to need to take unless you do have one of those bad areas there. And down there at the bottom, it's got the county name. I guess they fill that out at the county extension agents. Another thing, too, I always like to fill these out before I fill them with the soil. 
If you fill it with the soil, then it's a lot harder to try to scribble on there and get everything. So fill that bag out while it's nice and flat. It's a lot easier to write on. Now let's go to the garden and take that soil sample. On just about all the soil samples, it tells you to use a soil probe to pull your soil sample. But hey, we're just home gardeners and we don't want to spend 50 bucks on a soil probe. So I'm going to show you how to just use a simple spade to do it. it makes it simple and you don't need to waste no $50 on a soil probe that you might not use but once every three years. When I go down, you want to kind of put your spade down through there probably about 10 inches. Now I like to pull it back a little bit. You see there I got a little trench. Then I'm going to come back and get me just a small slice all the way down. What I want to do is get a good representative sample all the way through. So I'm going to reach down there and get me a little bit of that. I want to get it from the down all the way to the top there, several inches there. And I want to do this probably in this little 20-20 spot, probably about three different areas. Now my little 2020 spot out there, my new little garden area, I pulled, I think, four different sample areas out of that. If you got a bigger area, you may want to pull a little bit more. What you want to do is get a good representative sample of that whole area. So you kind of want to move around, make sure you get a little bit from each area of it so that you know exactly where you're at. Another thing too, whoop, there we go. On these soil sample bags, you can see right there, it says fill to this line. Now make sure you give them enough to test. If they don't have this thing about half full, they're not going to have enough soil to work with there. So make sure you pay attention to that line right there where it says fill to that line. Yep, move it over there and tighten it up the top down so it don't spill out. And I'll get this down there to the county extension agent and get it sent off. In a few days, I'll have this sample back. When I get the sample back, I'm going to look there at the pH and I'm going to see whether I need to raise it or I need to lower it or I'm okay. Hopefully I'm all right. But if I need to raise it, it's going to give me the lime requirements on that soil sample to know how much lime I need to apply to raise that pH to be within that 6.0 to 7.0 range. If it's too uh, high, then I got a problem there on that lower. And that's more of an issue. That's kind of a problem. It's a lot easier to raise pH than it is to lower it. Not saying you can't do it, but you have to use elemental sulfur for that to lower it. And elemental sulfur is soluble, so you have to make that application several times. So it's real important to have that soil sample to know where that pH is at before you apply anything. And you will not apply a line when you don't need it because that is a major boo-boo. Is applying line when you don't need it and you're shooting it way too high, then you got a problem that's going to take years to try to correct. Also, I'll know where my phosphorus and my potassium levels are at. To give you an example, that'll help me a lot with planting out my garden. So if I've got a plot that has really high phosphorus levels, I know that's where I want to plant my corn at because corn lots a lot of phosphorus. So it helps me know where to plant where on kind of the nutrient load of that spot. Soil samples help with planting uh, dramatically this time of year when we're looking where we want to put what. I mean, we don't want to think about rotation, but also we want to think about nutrient load for each plot as well. So all that right there will help you be a lot more successful growing your own food. You don't want to be out there working and put a lot of expense in something when, when something as simple as adjusting your pH can cause you to be successful.